So this week we're going to talk about the kind of fun you can have with text and layer styles inside Photoshop to create some very interesting effects. Now we're going to begin, I've gone ahead and created a, a document here to work in and just so you can see what I'm working with, it is a 9 by 4.5 inch at 100 pixels per inch and that's of course for demonstration reasons if you are doing this for large for, or, you know, for a print or any kind of other output then you would probably want to do it at a much higher resolution depending on what that is going to be. But for here, we're going to go ahead and leave it at that. So I've gone ahead and got uh, dragged in a background image. This is just a simple um, abstract shape that I've got for my background element. Then I've got the text that's going to be on top. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn off that background element for the moment because we're going to concentrate on the text here. Now we're going to use this text to create a path in order to create a, an interesting effect. But right now the text doesn't look all that great. In fact, I would like the text to be um, pretty, for the, for the most part, one continuous shape throughout this image. So we're going to uh, need to adjust some kerning on the text here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the text tool and just click in between the last two letters here, which is the K and the N. I'm just going to hold on the Option key on Mac, Alt on Windows, and then use the left arrow key, and that's just going to nudge that letter in there a little bit, closing in that space. I'm going to do this to all the letters with a um, with some various spacing. I, I've could, of, could of course use the tracking by selecting all the text and then um, narrowing the space, but I don't want the same um, spacing between each letter, so I'm going to do it individually. We'll bring that R in just quite a bit more. Let's, yeah, I'll put it right about there. So now all the letters are touching and ultimately creating one big shape here. Now one of my favorite features when it comes to working with text inside Photoshop is of course the ability to convert a text layer into a path. By simply going into the layers panel, going and holding down the control key or just simply right click on the text layer and choose from the menu right here, create work path. Now, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the text layer. You'll notice it created the path but did not do anything to the text and that's great just in case we wanted to go back to the text and try something else. But for now I'm going to go ahead and turn off the text layer and then we're left with just the path. Now if I go over here and open up my paths panel you can see that it is uh, saved as a work path right now. So I'm just going to double click on that and save it and there we have it. Now even though as text, it looked like all one object because the white shapes were overlapping each other. And when we are, have it in path mode here, you can see where the text overlays each other. So we need to combine all that to make it one shape. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the path selection tool and just drag and select the entire all the letters, the entire shapes. And then just go up here in the options bar and click on combine. You'll see it has fused all those shapes together, making it one continuous um, shape. So now what we're going to do is apply a brush to this path, but before we do that, we're going to need to break up the path a little bit, because right now the outer path here is just one continuous uh, path that goes all the way around the edge of the shape. And I want it to have some variation when I apply the brush, so we're going to take some segments out of this text. So if I go ahead and select the text, you can see where all the segment paths are. And we're going to look for where the smallest ones are that we can sacrifice. For, so I'm going to go ahead and grab the direct selection tool here and just click on this small path right in between these two areas here and hit delete. And you can see that path disappears. That basically breaks the line here. So that's on that end. Let's go on the other end here and locate another short path that we can get rid of. And uh, let's go ahead and grab that one right there and hit delete. So I'm clicking directly on the path area in between the control handles and then hitting delete and it gets rid of that segment. So now our text is ready to go. So now let's go ahead and grab the brush tools. We go in the brush uh, tools here in the toolbar and let's go ahead and create a new blank layer to brush on. Now I'm going to go in here into the brush menu and let's get this kind of scattered brush right here. Really you try this with any brush but you know it's kind of a cool scatter brush effect it will look pretty good. And I can see it just gives me some interesting looks, but not exactly what I want. So let's go ahead and change the behavior of the brush by going to the brush options. And we'll first go into the brush tip shape. And let's drop the size of the brush down a little bit. Not too big, but not too small either. Just a little bit thicker um, for the around the edge of the uh, lettering there. So around 25 will be fine. I'm going to go ahead and activate Shape Dynamics. Now down here I'm going to make sure I've got all these settings set to zero and all these other things checked off, but I am going to go in here and set 
the control for the size jitter, set the control menu to pen pressure. And you're going to want to do this even if you are not using a pressure sensitive tablet, and you will see why in just a moment. But I am in fact using a tablet, so if I go over here and paint, you can see that I can lightly press down, it gives me a very small line. If I press harder, it gives me a much thicker line. And that is, uh, of course, one of the biggest advantages of a pressure sensitive tablet. So that's all I'm going to do with this brush for the moment. Of course, I can go back in here and change it anytime I want, but let's go ahead and just paint a stroke here. And with that on the layer, let's add a layer style to give it some more interesting glow about it. Instead of just being plain white, let's put an outer glow on that. And let's go ahead and change the color. Let's get it something really outrageous, kind of like a pink. Change that blend mode to hard light and really increase the size and even the opacity, so we get a nice bright glow on there. And if you wanted to, you could take it even further and add an inner glow and give it yet an even more brighter effect here. Doesn't have to be too much, but you can see how it just enhances the glow on the inside just a little bit, and that looks pretty good. So again, that's just a layer style. So if I were to do a select all, let's turn off that path for the moment, and delete, even though the layer style is still there, as I paint, it will pick up that style and I just get an interesting effect as I draw. And this can actually be a lot of fun time to kill. Just going in here and sketching around. I can just, hey, write my name. Whee! All right. That's enough of that. But back to the path. All right, so now we have our path created and it's broken up in the segments we like. We've got our brush created and the layer with the layer style. So go in the path panel, go into that layer that or the path that contains it select that path and then go into the flyout menu or the uh, of the paths panel here and go ahead and choose stroke path now inside here you're going to go ahead and use the brush that we just created so go ahead and select brush and here is where you're going to check on simulate pressure again this is where you will have the pr uh, pressure setting on whether you're using a tablet or not it will register whether that setting is turned on even if you're not using it so check that item on and click ok and you can see it's giving me an interesting effect by painting that stroke on the path. And you notice because it broke it up, it gives me kind of two instances of it. Now that brush is a little thick. So I think I'm going to go ahead and drop that brush size down. Let's go back in the brushes and drop it down to maybe 15. And let's just reapply that brush. Now once you've done it once, you don't have to go into the pop-out menu and choose stroke path again. But you can just go down here to the bottom of the pass panel right up here and just click on this second icon which is apply the brush and there you can see the effect it looks pretty good so it's much smaller looks much nicer so let's go ahead and turn on our background uh, layer element and you can see we've got some really interesting things happening here now I'm gonna go back in that layer style because we've got an interesting glow on it but I'm gonna add a kind of an interesting spark effect to it by simply adding a drop shadow layer style but then, then going in here and changing the color to go along with that pink color, which uh, we'll just get a lighter pink here, and then change the blend mode to dissolve. Now it's gonna be a little crazy at first, and that's because of the opacity being so high, but simply drop that down to around 5%, and let's bring the distance back to zero, and you can see we get kind of this interesting spark effect uh, hovering around the, the streak there. And that's simply because of that drop shadow blend mode. And again, it's, it's a way of, looking at layer styles in ways that they weren't necessarily meant for, but can give you some really interesting things. Now again, on this layer, because it contains a layer style, no matter what we add onto it, will add to the effect. So if I went and grabbed the gradient tool, let's use the foreground to transparent gradient using the radial gradient right here. Let's just add some flares around the text. And you can see it picks up that layer style and adds a little bit more of an interesting glow to it. Just added a few different spots there, and it looks pretty good. Now, if I wanted to go even further, I'm going to go back and br grab that brush tool and make the brush even smaller. And you can go in here and get some uh, pretty creative freehand effects just by going and just freehand drawing on that layer, just kind of like scattered. You can almost get like a lightning effect just by brushing around here. And I am using the pressure sensitivity, so I'm just lightly touching on the streak. And I'm just kind of randomly just kind of doing a, a loose jerking motion all around to get almost like a, a electric lightning, a very stylized electric effect. I can even have it going off camera here, off the, the scene here. 
It's going to have some different effects going on. And this is where you can really go crazy. Now I can, of course, if I'm not thrilled with the color at this point of the glow, you can always go back in that layer style and choose something else. You can get me a nice bright green. Of course, you'll have to go in and change it to all the other elements as well. But we can certainly go ahead and do that. And in just a few clicks, you've got a nice, interesting effect. Now, you can be done at this point. You can experiment with uh, other settings like this. But under one more thing, if you were to go... And if you have Photoshop um, extended, go into the 3D menu and choose New 3D Postcard from Layer. And that's going to put that flat two-dimensional graphic into a 3D space. Now, if I go and use my 3D Rotate tools, I can move this around in 3D space and get some very interesting angles on it. Now, you'll notice the colors of the layer style tended to fade whenever I converted it into 3D. And that's merely because we need to render the effect to see it at its full glow. So if we go into that uh, 3D panel and then go down here to the quality menu and choose Ray Trace Draft, it'll get me a progressive render and there that really nice rich glow is back. But now it's in 3D space, ultimately giving me more options for how I want to position it. So it's just a way of maybe looking at text a little differently and then creating a graphic element from text as a vector path and then using those brush features to add elements to it to give you an ultimately interesting look in a way that you perhaps did not think of before. And certainly try it with different um, font styles, different text, and just see what kind of variations you can get. And of course, remember to have fun. See you guys next time.